Today we're going to be talking about the two new series of drones that have been announced by Autel, specifically the new Evo Lite series as well as the new Evo Nano. Now these two series of drones are designed to directly compete with models from DJI such as the A2 and the A2S as well as the Mini series of drones as well. Now, whilst I don't have these products on hand, what I am going to do in this video is walk you through some of the specs and features and more than anything, try to explain the differences between the versions in these model series. For instance, there are two versions of the Evo Lite and there are two versions of the Evo Nano. And depending on which version you choose will actually depend on the spec you get. And with regards to the Evo Lite series, there's quite a difference between the two models depending on their features. So what we're going to do is take a quick look over to Autel's website and explain the differences between them but specific differences between the versions within the models because it could get a bit confusing for people. Anyway let's get on with the video and take a look. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the new Evo Lite series. Now this model is designed to compete directly with the DJI A2 and the A2S. Just like those two models, this is also available in two versions as well, which have different cameras and give you different specifications and features based on those cameras. Now, taking a closer look at the camera specifications on the Evo Lite Plus, first of all, this is the higher end model that features a one inch CMOS sensor, a variable aperture lens, which is f 2.8 to f 11. It has up to 6K 30p recording and 20 megapixel stills. Now, just like the A2S, this model is designed to give you the best possible image quality in the smallest possible package. It has a number of interesting features, including something that restores natural colors. So whether the colors go off light and it can actually automatically balance exposure. And it has a defog mode as well, which is similar to dehaze on the likes of Photoshop or Lightroom, just to allow you to clear up the image slightly. Now, the interesting thing is this is the top model version of this new light Evo, but it doesn't have some of the other features that the basic model has that we'll take a look at in a minute. Moving down to that basic model, which is known as the Evo Lite. This, just like the first one, is the same drone, but it has a different camera specification. It features a 50 megapixel camera, which is one over 1.28 inch sensor or 0.8 of an inch in size. Now, this sensor is bigger than the traditional sensor you would find on the normal smaller drones like the Mini 2, the, the half 0.3 inch sensors, but it isn't quite as large as that one inch sensor. It's, as I said, features 50 megapixel stills photo and it can record up to 4K HDR video. It also features a lens which allows for both phase detect autofocus and contrast detect autofocus. And this is the first drone that I've seen to feature both of those autofocus systems. Now, there is also another interesting feature on this Evo Lite model, which is what they call the four axis gimbal. It has a feature that allows it to what looks like rotate the sensor and allow you to record portrait style video directly on the drone. Now, the interesting thing between these two versions is the feature differences on them. So for instance, the HDR recording, the phase detect and contrast detect autofocus and the fourth access portrait style recording is only on the Evo Lite version. The Evo Lite Plus has that one inch sensor, but it doesn't have that HDR. It doesn't have the option to rotate the image or that higher resolution 50 megapixel. Now, something interesting about this model, which is the standard one, is that it has this 50 megapixel sensor, which is a quad Bayer style sensor. It's more in real terms, 
around 12 megapixel like you find on other drones but it's labeled as 50 because of the way they do the photo sites but it is also now using an RYYB sensor instead of an RGGB sensor like you traditionally find. Now what I mean by that is a normal camera sensor uses one red photo site two green photo sites and one blue photo site and the reason they use two green is green is classed as your luminance and that is what the sensor uses to detect how bright an image is however in this sensor they're using a red yellow yellow blue so they've replaced the green photo site with a yellow and the reason for this is the green filter on a sensor will only allow green light through however the yellow filter will allow yellow light and green light through and the theory behind this is that it allows the sensor to capture more light and that way should give you better image quality in low light conditions however as with all things there is a downside to that as well and rather than it having a straight green it is having to actually process that image sensor data to give you green rather than just taking it green and whenever there's processing involved there, there is always then the option to introduce noise and other issues around that however for me this is really interesting because this is the first drone that I have seen to feature these RYYB sensors and it's going to be really interesting to see how this performs overall. Now as I've said on this standard model it features HDR video, it features instant focus because it is using that autofocus feature which is both phase detect and contrast detect and it's going to allow much more precise focus feature in things like tracking and stuff like that. Now interestingly the body on these two drones is basically the same just like it is on the A2 and the A2S. Autel have now announced this drone in multiple colours which is great to see so we can have a white, we can have the traditional orange and there is the grey colour going to be available too. All of these models also feature a number of special features like we've seen on other drones in the past which they call flick, rocket, fadeaway and orbit and these are the standard smart shots that you're used to seeing on drones from most manufacturers. Also there's the tracking feature that allows it to track users as well and you've also got that autofocus added to that tracking especially on that standard model which is going to give you some real interesting performance. Now moving down looking at the rest of the specification if we look at the drone itself at the top it features object avoidance sensors as we would expect and there is a new remote controller design with this drone that we've not seen before as well. This is using Autel's newest wireless system which works on 2.4 and 5.8 gigs. It also actually works on 5.2 gigs but for most people it's going to be 2.4 and 5.8 and it allows up to 7.4 miles range. One real little interesting feature that I haven't really seen mentioned is the fact that its live feed is capable of up to 2.7k 30 frames a second. Most of the other live feeds out there are 1080p and whilst you're only going to get this 2.7k at very close range that is much higher resolution than we've seen on any of the other live feed systems out there at the moment. There are also a number of other little features with this drone as well which is sonar sound, snap and shear and various features that they've got around the app. You've got the ultra wide object avoidance sensors so we have our two sensors on the front two downward and two pointing backwards and it also has up to 40 minutes battery life on this drone as well which again is simply outstanding. Now overall it is really interesting to see what Autel have done here with these models. You have the option of a light and a light plus and it's going to be interesting to see how people choose which one they're going to go for. For me 
the one inch sensor model is okay. There's nothing here that really impresses me. However, what I do like is this Evo Lite standard version with these interesting features such as the 50 megapixel photos, the 1.128 inch sensor which allows you to have that phase detect and contrast detect autofocus and this vertical portrait image stuff for uploading to social media because that's something we just simply haven't seen before. Okay, hopping over to the Evo Nano series. Now, this model of drone is designed to compete with the Mini and the Mini 2 from DJI. Now, the first thing you will notice is, yes, this drone has front object avoidance sensors, something that DJI does not have on their models. Now, looking at the specification, again, there are two versions based on camera spec. You have the Nano Plus and the Nano. Now, the Nano Plus features that same 1 over 1.28 or 0.8 of an inch sensor as we saw on the base model of the light. It features a RYYB sensor again because it is that same sensor and has that phase detect and contrast detect autofocus built in as standard. The normal model is fitted with more of a traditional half inch 48 megapixel sensor which is again that quad Bayer sensor like we've seen on most other drone models. Now there is some interesting software features on this for instance they turn around it says it allows for better image quality overall and this model weighs just 249 grams. It allows some other little features as well, like Sky Portrait, and they've got master subject tracking, cinematic shots, again, with flick, rocket, fadeaway, and orbit. We've got the features on the app. And again, it features that same remote control system that we saw on the light series. So again, you're going to have that seven kilometers range and that up to 2.7K video on the wireless system as well. Now, as I've said, this model features object avoidance sensors and it has front, down and rear facing object avoidance sensors, unlike we've seen on any other small drone. This model also is capable of flying for up to 28 minutes. So again, giving you extended flight time to allow you to get those shots that you wanna get. Now, I don't know how you guys feel about these drones, but I'm actually really excited because I think there's some really nice products and features here that we haven't seen before. For instance, the Light Series offers a hell of a lot to users looking to pack as much as possible into a small platform. You have that choice of that one inch model that will allow you to get the best possible image quality with that one inch sensor but if you're interested in some interesting new features this new 0.8 inch of a sensor model is going to give you 4k hdr it's going to give you that phase detect and contrast detect autofocus and i really am interested in seeing how well that actually works and how quick it's able to perform because it'd be great to not have pulsing like you can see on some lenses and then you've got that really interesting virtual mode which is going to allow you to do vertical video from a technical standpoint I'm interested to see do they actually rotate the sensor or do they rotate the gimbal it looks like they rotate the sensor according to the image but that image might not be correct now price wise it's estimated this model is going to come in at about 1149 for the standard light and 1249 for the light plus now this model is estimated to weigh about 820 grams and that means it is below that magic 900 grams that we have in the eu but there is no talk if this drone is going to be ce rated now it does also have that 40 minutes estimated flight time as well, which is again is more than enough for most people. And it's going to be interesting to see how this new wireless system they've got works, especially with that 2.7K live feed, much higher resolution than we've had on anything else. With regards 
to the Evo Nano series, this should not be discounted either. And I think it's really interesting how this is going to behave compared to DJI and what users choose to go with. Price wise, it is dearer than the Mini series, but it does have more features. You've got that object avoidance sensing and you've got those extra features because of this clever new sensor. Price wise, that's estimated to come in at 649 for the standard and 799 for the plus version and again that is a model that is going to come in under 249 grams and for that you've got a drone with up to that 0.8 inch sensor you've got that 4k recording you've got all-round object avoidance there is a lot to like here now as for availability, well, things are not clear at the moment on this and only time will tell. I really do think these are going to be extremely popular. And for me, I would love to get my hands on the light and the light plus, because for me, I think that's the sweet spot of specification and features. I think the nano is just not necessarily worth the money you save unless you absolutely want that weight benefit or size benefit but weight more than anything and i think the light is going to be the one that really does get a lot of people interested now I, there has been some comments around about they're more expensive than people thought and they're quite expensive compared to other models so for instance with the mini i think we are going to see drones increase in price period over the next six to eight months so i think all tell us sort of setting the standard here and we're likely to see others do something similar as well now that is pretty much it for this video please do tell me what you think give me your thoughts on these new drones obviously we haven't got them in hand this is just my thoughts on what i think about them but i'm interested to know what you guys think about it as well finally if you'd like to support the channel to help us keep making videos like this please do consider hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well there are links to buy me a coffee as well as patreon in the description if you're interested in talking with us more we also have a discord server i'll put a link to that in the description of this video as well so please check that one out